Time Magazine's list of the 100 most influential people in the world, and she was crowned Artist of the Year by Billboard and iTunes. Recently, I traveled to London and sat down with her for a rare interview. Adele has had one of the most meteoric rises the music industry has ever seen. Just three days out of high school, she landed a recording contract. Two years later, her debut album won two Grammys. The Grammy goes to Adele. Now at 24, she's added six more Grammys to her name. It hasn't stopped there. Well, look who's playing Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can, can you describe the moment? So yeah, it gave me complete shivers and it was towards the end of my tour. It wasn't the last day of my tour. It was a moment I'll never forget. Last September, Adele had London's Royal Albert Hall under her spell with her trademark rich singing voice. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. Two months after that concert, her career almost ended when she underwent vocal cord surgery, unable to speak or sing while she recovered. Because of all that was swirling around you and this career that was just exploding, was that pause? helpful though? I felt like I needed a bit of a rest, but at the same time I don't like cancelling shows. Some, some really big names in the music industry reached out to you during that period of time. Yeah. yeah, I was getting emails from like Roger Daltrey and Elton John and Steven Tyler who have been going for decades and decades. And at that point when you start to hear from these legends, do you start to say, wait a minute, I'm in a whole different crowd here. The night before the Grammys, Elton John called me at the hotel room. I had no idea who it was. And he just started <laughs> chatting away to me. And it was really, and I passed the phone on to a friend. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's Elton. <laughs> and it still cracks me up. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it was, um, it did make me think a little bit like, oh, my God, it's a bit of another level now. It was at the Grammys this year that she sang for the first time since that surgery. She says it was memorable in more ways than one. Like three or four pairs of spanks on that night. <laughs> but the Were you comfortable in that? Did you oh, like the way it. you looked? No, I loved it. I actually had another dress made for the Grammys, and I ended up, uh, well, I passed out in it. I had a corset, so I was like, I can't wear that. So I ended up wearing this at short notice. Can you sing with four pairs of spanks on? Oh, I took a couple of pairs off when I sang at so the Grammys. There's only two, the, the <laughs> yeah. maximum two pairs to actually <laughs> yeah. sing? Yeah. <laughs> You have a song that's popular, rumor has it. All right, so what's the wildest rumor that you've heard about Adele? Hmm, I don't know, it's been quite a few. Probably that I was adopting an Ethiopian child. So that's not true. Oh, that's wait a second, so that's not true. <laughs> I have to no, change my whole interview now. <laughs> that's not true. For Adele, the downside of this success is losing anonymity. I don't want to be a celebrity. I don't want to be in people's faces, and I feel a little bit like I am in people's faces because even though I have hardly done anything because of all of my voice issues, right. I mean, my music's constantly on radio, it's constantly on TV. I mean, Entertainment Weekly did a, an issue where they said, here are the 30 greatest artists right now. You were number one. Mm. And, and it's, a, it's nice to smile at, but is it possible to live a little in the shadows even when that kind of adulation is being heaped on you? I managed to sort of stay out of the public eye recently. I think I'm doing all but the other day I walked through Trafalgar Square on a Saturday afternoon. Describe the scene. Haven. What was that? What was happening? Well, I mean, I was a bit worried. I was in my pajamas as well because I hadn't. I'm my, I'd been working the day before, so all I had were these awful. I was in colour. I'm always in black. <laughs> I had floral tracksuit bottoms on, this massive green coat, and some little pink pumps. And luckily, I mean, I was really scared. But I had this massive umbrella. So wait a second. Nobody recognised you. Nobody recognised me. A couple of people looked round, but they were like, "No, she's in colour." And what would she be doing walking through, like, you know, a packed Trafalgar Square on In pyjamas. In pyjamas. But the Adele we all know draws huge crowds and sells millions of albums. It's one thing to be the most talked about singer in the world right now. Do you want to be the most talked about singer in the world ten years from now? No. <laughs> I just want to make music. I don't want anyone chatting about me. Really? I mean, I still hope I have a little bit of clout in 10 years, but um, I just, yeah, all I've ever wanted to do is sing. Thank you. 
I think most people in the music industry think she's still going to have a lot of clout in 10 yeah. years. I mean, she is the real deal. That's the thing. I mean, it, maybe that's what makes her so good, is it is for her about the music, you know? And, and that's, that's, a, that's a lesson. And the other thing that comes across in, in the special, you'll hear more of this interview, uh, is that, you know, she says everybody knows her as this person who writes about these horrible breakups in her life and this, you know, this sadness. She says, in real life, she's a very happy, content person and that she thinks people will be surprised by that. You can catch more of our interview with Adele on her first ever network special, Adele Live in London. That's Tuesday, June 5th at 8, 7 Central Time, right here on NBC. And